Hi, welcome to an early morning with Maria and MH Books. It's Wednesday morning. I have to go to work by 7.30 and I have to pack up laptops and things from home and files. So they're going to have to be reasonably quick for me um, filming this. Um, I do have a writing exercise I wanted to do this morning. And the writing exercise is about poetry. It's supposed to spark you off into writing something else. I've done this exercise before. I'm repeating it at the moment because I'm in the middle of a year in at work. So I wanted to make sure I get about half an hour of writing every day just to keep it ticking over. So I'm just going through all the exercises that we used to do in class. And the way the exercise was stated, was you're supposed to pick 10 lines of poetry, at least from eight different poems, lines, not sentences, and it's supposed to be poems that you like. Now I've changed this around today. I'm picking 10 sentences because the Sunday sentence has me thinking in sentences. Um, so hashtag Sunday sentence sentences often on Twitter, sometimes on um, BookTube. And we just pick, you know, your favorite sentence from the book that, from that week in case you don't know what it is. But because of that, it has me thinking in sentences rather than in lines, which is probably not good for poetry writing, but I don't want to write poetry, so that's okay. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pick 10 sentences from poems at random that I may not actually know. Some of these poetry collections I haven't yet to open, so <laughs> I tell these little bookmarks here. So I selected 10 sentences last night, which I'm going to use for the exercise. The exercise is supposed to inspire writing a longer piece of work. In my case, it would be prose um, afterwards, um, based around the sentences such, or the lines in the, originally that you pick. So. With much more, no more ado, because this has just gone on for two minutes. Um, those who don't like poetry, you can turn this off if you like, I don't mind. <laughs> um, so this is just 10 poems, 10 sentences, why I chose them. This is from Sharon Darwin by Sabine Wichert, which is Salmon Publishing, which is an Irish poetry, com press, poetry press. So this one, unfortunately, I don't understand the music she writes, but I suspect that she is not what she appears to be. She talks about beautiful tunes while I, while I think of radio signals. So that's unfortunately, I don't understand the music she writes, but I suspect that she is not what she appears to be. She talks about beautiful tunes while I think of radio signals. I just thought that was a very lovely beginning of a piece of, this is poetry, but of writing and it's intriguing and would make me want to read more. This is a more famous piece of um, poet. Um, this is Joe Chapcott of Mutability, which won the Costa in 2010, according to the sticker. And from her work, I chose a last sentence of a, post, of a poem. The poem is Scorpion and the last sentence is, I kill it because I will. It will not speak to me. That's I kill it because I. It will not speak to me. I'm saying the sentences twice because I know that I am not very clear at speaking. It comes from being partially deaf and not wearing hearing aids at the moment because we have to wear face masks because we can't do both unless you get really, really expensive face masks. Um, this one here is from the Essential Guide to Flight. It's Celeste. Okay, I think it's Salmon Poetry Press. Yeah, I have a lot of Salmon Poetry Press because they're an Irish press. Um, so this one is My Mother Tries to Knit. It takes three generations to wind the ball into a tight ball. So I am joined to my mother and my three-year-old son, this skein of multicolored wool, improbably bright. And I actually messed up on that sentence, so I'll say it again as well. Um, it takes three generations to wind the yarn into a tight ball. So I'm joined to my mother and my three-year-old son by the skein of multicoloured wool, improbably bright. Um, I just thought that was a lovely image of of the three generations and, and using the ball and wool and how everybody's tied together. The next poetry collection is one of my older ones from the bookshelf and it's actually got quite dusty. Um, so I should have been taken down red a bit more often, eh? Um, this one is Monzia Alvi, Split World Poems, 1995 to 2005. 
and the poem I chose from her is called Missing. It's the first line. When my wife disappeared, it was grey as a school shirt. So that's again. When my wife disappeared, it was grey as a school shirt. Um, I just liked the juxtaposition of the words and that and that a school shirt is 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 kind of normal and dull and being grey is quite normal. Um, and the ordinariness of something extraordinary uh, of your wife disappearing that may have just been an ordinary circumstance um, it makes you want to read the poem further. Um, the next one is from Jessica Trainer, um, Liffy Swin. Jeff Jessica Trainer does some writing course. I did a very a beginner's one of her years years ago, I think about ten years ago. And uh, from her poems, this is De Dallas Press. Um, I chose ha halfway through a poem. From her oil, they made seven lamps that will burn. Um, the sentence alone is intriguing. I know what it, it's about. It's about a whale. Um, but from her oil, they made seven lamps that will burn. It just sounds so harsh in such a simple sentence. Um, burning whale oil. Um, so something simple as saying her, which could be human. Um, this one is Caroline Duffy, Rapture, which is a poetry collection, one of my favourite ones. Um, which is about an affair. Um, probably not, a, you know, <laughs> the nicest behaviour, but it's about an affair and it's very much the love story of the affair. Um, so finding the words. So this is the actual first sentence again of the poem, you know. Maria's obviously lazy, she just goes to the beginning of a poem. I found the words at the back of a drawer, wrapped in dark cloth, like three rings slipped from a dead woman's hand, cold, dull gold. Um, so again, I found the words at the back of a drawer, wrapped in black cloth, like three rings slipped from a dead woman's hand, cold, dull gold um so you get kind of the impression that the words were devastating um the next one mary kenley's catching bats takes practice um the 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 title attracted me to this it's from liberty's press another irish publishing company um in the heart of dublin and from her again, I picked the first line. Do poets spend a lot of time concentrating on the first line? Or is Maria lazy? Probably both. So this one is from Temper. Um, I do love the imagery of this one. So in my anger, the words pop and fizz and collide inside my brain before they pour out, heedless of caution, as a boiling, scarring shout. And again, in my anger, the words pop and fizz and collide inside my brain before they pour out. He lays a caution as a boiling, scarring shout. So that's a good imagery of the bit, the part where you explode in an argument and it just goes. Um, okay, the next one is, I just realised, I'm just tossing out to the bed. Um, Memory of Blue by Jacqueline Kolosov. Kol Again, I think this is salmon. Yes, this is salmon poetry. And from her poem, I picked uh, Two Happinesses. Again, in the beginning. Um, Take this afternoon's silver grey light of maple branching towards evening. Our cat, ink dark, skittering across the grass. I just thought that's a beautiful image. So take this afternoon's silver grey light of maple branching towards evening. Our cat, ink dark, is quite skittering across the grass. And it's a great opening. It puts you exactly where you want to be at the beginning of the poem. Um, so you know where you are at the beginning. So what happens next? I think that's why I like the beginnings. Um... You can see I actually used bits and pieces. I had a book from the Gooda bookshop delivered and I wrapped in books in my bag. 
um, brown paper bag that I use pieces of the bag. I'm so lazy. <laughs> I didn't get up to get a post-it note. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one is Dark Things by Novacha Nova Tajek. Um, it's the closest thing to a horror collection I have in poetry. Um, this is halfway through the poem. And um, the, the poem is called Night Passes. Uh, did I just call that? Uh, it's Dark Things is the name of the, of the collection. Dark Night Passes is the poem. Halfway through. Um, the noise of the crowd grows faint on the town square and in our blood. So it's the noise of the crowd grows faint on the town square and in our blood. Um, it's very ominous. Um, why did it suddenly get so quiet, that feeling? Um, if I said she, that's a man, male older. I'm not sure if I did. Most of my poetry collections tend to be women, so a lot of them might be say she. Um, okay, this one is Frosted Fields. It's from Sidereal and it's Rachel Boast. And I think it's again, no, it's Picador Poetry and so frosted feels so these are the veils of morning the last gift to be given by air into air and by the slow sun heavy with all the days of the year so these are the veils of the morning the last gift to be given by air into air and by the slow sun heavy with all the days of the year that's just one i could read again and again and again and get different kind of meanings from um yeah i don't know if i'm smart enough for photos sometimes but it doesn't stop me from enjoying it and the last one this is actually probably 11 poems because i have a tendency to to put 11 and then just because it becomes a net writing exercise to eliminate one so if it's 11 it was that couldn't count and if it isn't 11 i was lazy I can't remember what I did last night. Um, this is Remember the Birds, Louise C. Callahan. Again, this must be Salmon. Yes, it's a Salmon Poetry Press. And it's two thirds the way through, three quarters of the way through a poem called Goodbye. It is years since you died. How slowly I defrost. Which I thought was a kind of a true sentence. So it is years since you died. How slowly I defrost. Um, which on its own also I thought had some, um, because sometimes things, you know, lead you on to the poem, but some things actually stand alone as a sentence. Um, so yeah, so that's my exercise um, that I'm going to start off with. It gets narrowed down. You're, you're no problem, unlikely to see any of the rest. Uh, <laughs> that would be would definitely be boring. Um, you can see that the day has 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 started. Maria has to go to work. If you read through, you read through. If you if you listened all the way through this, I hope you got you enjoyed some of it. Um, I'll put all the po poetry collections down below just in case somebody is intrigued. And meanwhile, I hope whatever you're reading, you're enjoying. Bye.